So it is the first day that I've actually used the computer to edit. I'm going to start editing a video for my main channel, the Scott Schroeder channel, and we'll see how it goes. This is kind of risky because I am not in a position where I have a ton of extra time. So if this doesn't work out well, then I'll let you know because I'll be using my Windows computer to finish the edit. Hopefully, I'm hoping though that I don't have to do that because I would like to see just how powerful this computer is. 10 years later. There are so many little features in macOS that I kind of just can't stand. This is why I don't use macOS to do anything professionally. Uh, the biggest one is every little setting that they have, it just feels wrong. I'm a Windows guy, so scrolling, I have to turn that setting backwards. Uh, all the little features, and then also this big one, this one right here, where whenever I download music from the internet for, for a video, Whenever I download that music, it automatically starts playing in music. And now I need to learn how to turn that off. All my other preferences have been off. The computer seems to be working okay. I don't have any complaints about the actual usability of the computer. My files and my footage isn't really all that demanding, but it is 4K, low bit rate 4K, but 4K nonetheless. It's been handling all that pretty well, but everything else about it has been, like, I just have to change so much, it's like slowing me down a lot. I got a bunch of work done today. I'm going to finish up now and just settle in and try to get this video finished. So I've been editing the video now for a few hours and I've actually been casually editing this video that you're watching now. And it's been fine. I don't really have any problems with the computer. My problems and gripes are more with Mac OS. I don't love using Mac OS. There's a reason I've been using Windows to edit every video I've made in the last three or four years. Uh, it just works better for me and my workflow. And I think that's ultimately one of the cruxes and one of the problems with switching operating systems is I can't just casually test out this computer. I have to, like I have to go all in on it. There are a lot of great things about it. The text messaging is wonderful. The passwords are all saved from my iPhone, show up on the Mac. A lot of that stuff is really wonderful. The text messages can be extremely distracting. I know that there's potentially a way to turn on Do Undisturbed so it just affects the Mac and not my phone. I think I have that set up in my MacBook. I'm not really sure how to do that. I had to look that up. But again, it's one of those things where I'm gonna take a bunch of time to set up a bunch of things to use it for maybe a day or two. And then if I don't like it, then I'm not gonna use it again. And it seems to me like sticking with Windows is probably the best case scenario. But what I will say is if you're somebody who's just starting out, I would be very aware of what operating system you're locking yourself into. I personally will push most people to away from macOS. macOS is really easy. It's really easy to use. There are a lot of great benefits with it. It's also relatively cheap when you think about it because it gives you a free video editing software, which I could probably make most of my videos on if I were to just use iMovie. It's actually relatively powerful. So if you're just starting with video making, that is actually a great tool that Apple gives you for free. But you gotta be careful what you're locking yourself into because you're gonna build a bunch of processes and processes around the operating system that you use. For me, it's Windows. For you, it might be Mac OS or Linux or whatever. And I know that for me, it, it's hard to switch back. It's one of those things where test out both, but eventually you're gonna have to choose one and just stick with it. And know that when you buy an Apple computer, you buy Mac OS, that there are a lot of negatives that come with that but there are also a lot of positives that come with it as well. So I'm gonna get back to editing this video and talking a little bit. Okay, so it is now the next day and I have been using this computer for the better part of a several hours. This video edit took six to eight hours for my other channel, the Scott Schroeder channel. And the timeline is, I wanna show you what the timeline looks like to show off just how good I am at video editing. Look at all those cuts. Look at all this audio. Um, this is just generally what a timeline looks like for me. So you have a reference point of my video editing and what it looks like. And the computer was completely usable the whole time. I want to initially say that I am using a Canon R6 with the lower bitrate 4K. I believe that's 8-bit and they have a 10-bit option on the Canon R6. I don't use that. Uh, the reasons are because I like to save space and the 4K lower resolution or lower bitrate I think looks fine. And if we're making YouTube videos, we're not making Netflix documentaries. So, I think it looks good, I have no problems with it. And I used the Mac Pro to edit this video. There were a couple complaints I had, but it actually had nothing to do with the Mac Pro itself. Mac OS, I don't like it very much. I love Mac OS for everything that has that doesn't have to do with creating something in terms of video. I like it for Photoshop, I hate it for Premiere Pro. I just, I, it just, I don't know, it just doesn't work with my brain. I love it on Windows, I hate it on Mac OS. So that's, that's just me. Maybe you're different, but I don't really like using Mac OS to create videos. I prefer, I much prefer Windows. They make everything a lot easier. OBS Studio is a lot easier. You can screen record stuff a lot easier. Everything just works better on Windows for me. So that's why, I mean, I'm not gonna switch to this computer, 
because I thought that that's how it would be, but I, I, I've always wanted this computer, I was interested. So for reference, I am coming from a Windows desktop that I custom built, a Ryzen 7 3700X and an RTX 3070. Given the fact that I bought the Mac Pro for about 350 bucks, it's about $800 more. So what I'll say is that this computer was completely useful to edit that video. You saw the timeline, it's completely fine. It, I'm not filming the most involved videos. I also edit everything at 1 8th resolution when scrubbing through the timeline. So for a video editor, from my perspective, it was pretty reasonably capable. For 350 bucks, a 2013 Mac computer, you know what you're getting into. You're not buying this because it's the best price performance. It's not, we all know it's not the best price performance. No Apple computer ever has been. So should you buy this computer in 2023? Well, for a lot of you, you're watching this video because you really want one, and I would suggest just go buy it. I mean, who cares, live a little bit, but because it's a cheap computer, it's a good budget computer. Now, if you're gonna go out and spend $800 on one of these, eight, 600, 700, 800, $900, honestly, you're kind of dumb, don't do that. Please don't do that. No offense, you're not an idiot, but you're dumb if you do that. I would really suggest just buying an M1 Mac Mini. It's basically the same price, it's gonna perform better, especially in Apple apps like Final Cut Pro. Just go out and buy that computer. This computer, if you want this computer, there's a few reasons why, I think. One of them is because it's the coolest looking computer that's ever been made. I think that, without a doubt, in my opinion, it's the coolest looking computer. It's beautiful, it looks, everything about this computer is, in my opinion, basically the prettiest. Next, you want a little project. It was stressful to upgrade the CPU, but it was a cool, fun project. I like doing those things, and I know a lot of other people like doing those things too. So if you wanna do that, just go get it, it's okay. It's not too expensive. You know, if this was $1,000, $1,300, I would say definitely don't, but 300 bucks, you find a good deal on it, you can upgrade the CPU. If you don't end up liking it, you could sell it back in a year and probably get basically all your money back. So for the people who are basically already decided that they, they want this thing, go out and buy it. If you're waffling between this and something else, don't buy this. Obviously, you know what you're getting into when you're buying a, a Mac computer. You know you're gonna pay the Apple premium, the Apple tax premium on it. So understand it's not gonna be the most powerful, but I had no problems editing a 4K video and you could see it linked down below the video for my other channel which is a running self-development type channel. And you can see it's a, it's a pretty good video and it looks pretty darn good. And then it comes down to the encoding. And for example, I just wanted to pull this up and start encoding this video to show you just how long this actually takes. <laughs> this is, that's what's left. Two hours and 23 minutes to encode this. I'm not completely surprised. I mean, it, this, this CPU is a Xeon CPU. It doesn't have Intel Quick Sync, which it like helps with export times. It also is using an AMD GPU, which doesn't have all the wonderful things that NVIDIA, like NVENC, and all the encoding processes that NVIDIA has developed. I went to my Windows computer and it took like six and a half minutes to export this entire thing. That's the problem. It's still using old technology. A lot of new technology is better. It's not just more expensive. There are a lot of improvements. Would I suggest buying this again? No, I would lean against it personally, but I get why people want to buy it. So at the end of the day, I would say lean M1 Mac mini. You're going to get much longer support. It's going to be much more powerful and much better for you. And if you're doing more intensive tasks, don't buy a 10 year old computer, buy a Windows computer. It's cheaper. Look, I like Mac OS as much as the next guy, but the price to performance ratio, especially if you're using a program like Premiere Pro or potentially DaVinci is going to run a lot better. Again, if you're somebody who uses Final Cut, you have to buy a Mac. So go ahead and buy an M1 Mac mini and that's all I gotta do. Thank you guys for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. This has been Scott with Techno Eclipse. Peace out.